Yo! Welcome back to One More Mana. My name's Derek, and today we finally have Akoria. We don't just have Akoria, we got the Akoria set. We got Commander decks, five of them. We have so many legendary creatures. Partner with his back. There are so many things happening right now, Commander. I could not wait to get back. The next few weeks are going to be filled with deck techs. There are so many. I think I can genuinely say this is commander wise as far as the number of commanders this has been one of my if not my favorite commander sets so far just because all of the legends in the commander sets seem creative there, there's no lazy generic value engines that just do stuff for you not calling any cards out but, but they all seem insanely creative insanely fun and there's some just some builds that these are going to enable that are just going to be a blast to both play and maybe more importantly play against too. I'm just loving the legends in this set. But there was one specific legend that spoke to me even more than all the others and it was the beautiful mess of a hydra that is Zaxara the Exemplary. We're going to get into all the amazing and beautiful things this hydra does in just a second. But first, if you want to get any of these commander decks, the whole deck, singles, whatever you're looking for, maybe 50 copies of Zaxaris, you can have every X spell deck imaginable, go ahead and head over to TCG Player. If you use the affiliate link down below, any cards you get through there will help support the channel, help support our content. We really, really do appreciate the help. So getting right back into Zaxara, it is one in Sultai, best color combination out there, for a death-touching Nightmare Hydra, which is just such a... Such a great creature type. And it can also tap for two mana of any color. But of course, that's not where the excitement ends or even begins. The excitement is every time you cast a spell with X in it on cast, you get a zero zero Hydra with X plus one plus one counters onto it. This makes me just so happy in so many ways. If you remember the Vile Smasher deck tech I did a while back at this point, one of my biggest reasons for loving that deck was you can make tons of mana, dump it all into a spell, and even if it's countered, you still get that cast trigger for Vile Smasher throwing something at somebody. Well, in this case, we still have kind of that fallback, which is beautiful. We can cast massive X spells, and even if someone goes ahead and counters it and they're trying to ruin the fun for you, you're still going to get a massive Hydra to go ahead and smack them with anyway. I just love what this does because it essentially turns your X spells into all these awesome versions of Hydroid Crisis. One of the things that makes Hydroid Crisis so crazy is the fact that, well, one, it's a giant trampling flying Hydra, but two, not only do you get a massive creature, but you get that card draw and life gain. It's almost like you're getting an instant and a sorcery mixed with a creature, and that's exactly what Zexara is going to do for us. We can cast huge, impactful instants and sorceries that have X that also make a huge board presence at the same time, which to me seems super broken. You're really going to notice a lot of structural similarities between this deck and that Nyx Blue Mansion deck tech I did with Tastigar not too long ago, because they're kind of doing a similar thing. You want to ramp super, super hard, whereas that other deck was looking to mill people. This one, we're looking to cast just some awesome X spells. I didn't really go with Hydra Tribal. I know it's a big thing you can do, and a lot of people that first thought it's going to be Hydras. But my feeling is, I want other impactful X spells. I'm already making giant Hydras. I don't need to cast Hydras, get more Hydras. I can cast other huge X spells and get Hydras anyway. So the way I see it is, I want to pick the most impactful to me, the coolest X spells and just happen to get Hydras as a secondary effect and then benefit off of those. There's tons of ways to build Zoxara and, and really it's going to take time over the weeks and months to figure out the way it works best for me. You can go full Hydra Tribal. You can go and just put in a critical mass of X spells and just fill it with X spells because the great thing about X spells is early game you can cast it for less and it scales with the game. But the way I see it is we can pick 10 to 12 of our favorite, favorite X spells. And because we're in Saltai, we have tons of cards that can just go ahead and e-wit stuff back, reclaim stuff back, and just keep using those insane X spells we love over and over again, and in the process getting massive Hydras. It seems like a, such a fun deck, because we're going to be able to cast massive spells, swing with massive Hydras, and just have a good time. Now, starting with the creatures, there are, I know it's not Hydra Tribal from what I said, but you do have some Hydras, just the ones that have the biggest impact. We want our Hydras to give us a little bit extra. We don't want, just want to play a vanilla massive hydra just because we're already getting those so this first one isn't actually a hydra but in its heart it is and it's altered ego alter ego is super amazing because you're just going to clone something dump a bunch of plus one plus one counters on it and it can't be countered so i already said having that cast trigger is kind of a fallback for counter spells if we tap out well now we don't even have to worry about it and the fact that we can copy the biggest threat or the coolest creature on the board just throwing plus one counters on it stuff gets silly with this card 
and just, you know, getting another big boy with it, it doesn't hurt at all. Obviously, I already mentioned it, Hydroid Crisis is going to be in the deck just because to get that massive Flampler with the card draw, it's, it's crazy. It just mixes everything together. And again, we're getting extra benefits. We're not just getting a big creature because we're getting those anyway. We're getting that card draw with it, and it's a Flampler. So, like, it's a huge threat by itself. I also love Voracious Hydra and Steel Bane Hydra because in their own ways, they act as removal. We can remove creatures, we can remove artifacts, enchantments, and that's really just a way to synergize with the deck where we get those types of removal within our big spells. Even if we can't get these things just crazy massive, we can still have them as sources of removal throughout the game. And then the next one isn't any sort of X spell, but it, it's, it fits right in, and it's Corpse Jack Menace. The thing is, I don't like a lot of those additional plus one counter effects like a hardened scales or anything in a deck like this it just seems kind of it's just not worth it it's not worth it for a deck slot just to put one additional counter but to double the counters that's 100 percent worth it we are already casting huge things but this is great for situations if x is only going to be seven or eight which is super conservative in this deck then well great now we got a 14 or a 16 plus one plus one counter hydra ready to swing at somebody it makes a huge impact for the low mana investment in it Moving on to the Planeswalkers, Kiora Behemoth Beckner is everything that we want. You can untap a permanent, meaning not only can we untap some of our broken lands, but some of our crazy artifact ramp, different things we're going to get to, we can untap that as well. This can lead to some of our more explosive turns, and the thing I love about it so much is that because it's a Planeswalker, you can immediately use that effect when you bring it in, immediately untapping things, holding this up for a crazy explosive turn. Having that ETB effect for creatures with power 4 or greater, which almost all of our Hydras coming off our commander are going to be, is just gravy on top to keep drawing cards and keep refilling our hand. And why not throw in a Planeswalker that's an X-Spell itself with Nissa Steward of Elements? I love, love, love this card in any deck that's making a bunch of mana because it becomes so hard to deal with. If you can just dump mana into this, having a Scry 2 or an extra draw every turn, especially when you get that loyalty to 30 or 40, which is not hard to generate that much mana in the deck, it's, it just becomes useless to swing at. It's kind of just a force of nature at that point. And if they really want to spend that many points of damage taking out a Planeswalker, let them. Most of the time, though, it's just going to stick around and you're going to keep getting that scry or that card advantage. Or if you really want to minus it, even get some more presence on the board. It's great. And obviously getting that extra Hydra with it doesn't hurt you. Now with the sorceries, we have tons of ramp, so much ramp. And you're going to see this is the spot that has almost the most similarity to that Tassiger Nyx Bloom Ancient Ramp deck I talked about not too long ago. We want tons of ramp and a lot of the cards that let us tutor for specific lands like an hour of promise things in in that realm of ramp because we want we're in Salta. We want Urbor. We want Cabal Coffers. No shock to anyone that's going to be one of the biggest ramp packages in the deck, and it's just such an easy way to go ahead and get them. But one card in the new set that is immediately going into so many of my decks is Migration Path. This card is it's literally just explosive vegetation with cycling. Literally the only downside to a lot of the sorcery-based ramp effects is if you get them late game, why, you don't really want to use them. It's kind of just a dead card. Yeah, you can ramp, but it's usually not worth it. Now you can cycle it away. This card is insane. I am going to buy so many copies of this because every green deck I play, this is going to find a way in because that cycling, it just makes it a free card slot. You're not even worried about having it as a dead card late. You can just cycle it. This card is amazing. And yeah, this is one of the cards I'm most excited about, period, in the new set. Now when we get into these X spells, some of them won't be surprising at all. Animus Awakening is so good because, again, normally the downside to this is if you don't have the spell mastery to go ahead and untap, then you just dump all your mana, you get a bunch of lands into play on tap, but nothing to protect yourself. Now with our commander, we get a massive Hydra on top of it. And with all the instants and sorceries we have, a lot of times we're going to be untapping those lands anyway. Two of my favorite finales are in here. One I'm going to save for the game winning step, but the other one is Finale of Revelation. This thing is awesome. The fact that you can get all the way to that 10x so easily in this deck and have the extra benefit of that no maximum hand size drawing all these cards... Oh yeah, and then untap some lands, because even though we're untapping five lands with our possibly more than one copy of Cabal Coffers out, that's going to mean a lot, a lot of mana, and all the cards we drew might just draw us into another X spell. This card is explosive in this deck, and it really just good in general. It's probably my favorite draw X type effects, because there's a lot of those. It's just really powerful, and that upside is just so good. And then... No surprise, Villainous Wealth. I have a whole deck dedicated to Villainous Wealth. Clearly, Villainous Wealth was going to be in here. It's actually kind of weird building this deck not completely built around Villainous Wealth. It's one of many different effects. But the times you get it off, I mean, 
Making a Hydra really doesn't matter as much with this one, because if you're casting this for a huge bag, you probably just won anyway. I was also so excited to see that it was in the pre-con, introducing people to the, the beautiful card that is Villainous Well nice and early. I like to see what Wizards is doing there. It really is one of the biggest counter targets, so having this commander makes it that much safer for you to cast, because at least you're getting a big beater out of it regardless. And then with the instance, we have lots of removal and a decent amount of counter spells. Now, I'm not someone who's super into just countering other people's stuff. I kind of like to have the mindset of like, let people do their thing until it gets a little too scary. If they're about to win, then maybe, you know, stop what they're doing a little bit. But the reason I love counter spells in a deck like this is just to protect your own stuff. You're casting huge X spells. You're casting huge impactful spells. We have some ways around that and we have those cast triggers, but it is great to run a bunch of counter spells. But don't go wasting them on other people's stuff early game. Don't be trying to counter people's commanders and countering little spells in here and there. It's better just to hold them back and just use them as protection as opposed to trying to stop people from doing stuff, especially in a deck like this. But you can also get your counter spells to synergize with what you want. So something like Spell Swindle is everything we want. Spell Swindle can protect us, it can ramp us, and getting that all in one package, it's, it's a great, great way to take advantage of having one spell take up so many slots, essentially. Sometimes it's just fun to hold it back for a little bit and see the biggest card that you can counter to see how many treasures you can get. It's super fun. If you got a crazy budget, you can also throw a, a mana drain in there, but uh, I, I don't, so I did. But even within this instant slot, there's a few different X spells that are great in this deck, and I love them here because we can do this right before our turn so that way our massive hydra can swing right away. Icy Blast is phenomenal. You can just tap people's stuff down. This is a great, great way, especially the end step before you turn. Cast this for a whole bunch of mana. Tap down everyone's creatures and get a massive Hydra. You can just immediately swing out after and kill someone with this. This is a super powerful card. And my money's on the fact that we're probably going to have a four power or greater creature. So we're there going to be tapped down for a little while, not just for that one turn. It's a great way to kind of open everything up. It's almost like a better unblockable effect in this deck because of the fact that you can keep them tapped down. And then Stroke of Genius is a classic card draw X spell. It's phenomenal for so many reasons because it has that flexibility. If we get to some of the crazy amounts of mana that are possible, you can just deck someone. Said it wasn't a mill deck, but we, we, we find ways. But in a lot of the situations that we get it, we can just use it on ourselves to get that card draw. But that flexibility, again, makes it so much more powerful in this deck. Ideally, you could make hundreds of mana, potentially, deck someone, get a ridiculously large Hydra and then try to swing at someone to turn after. You can get really silly with this card. Now in the artifacts are some of the most important ramp in the entire, entire deck. Now there is that new artifact in the set that has all the abilities of your lands and I'm considering putting it in the deck, but my biggest issue with it is that it comes in tapped and a lot of these artifacts, I like to play the turn of and get the effect. So stuff like Mirage Mirror, stuff like Doubling Cube. I wanna be in a situation where I have a bunch of mana and then I'm playing the doubling cube, doubling it, or I'm playing the Mirage Mirror to copy a doubling cube or copy Mana Reflection or copy the Cabal Coffers immediately and getting that benefit. It's really scary to me to spend them, it's only three mana, but to play it in tapped and then have to wait the turn of the table to have it then untap, a lot of the explosive turns in this deck, you want to have access to stuff right away. I'm probably going to go ahead and slot it in to give it a try, but to me, Mirage Mirror and doubling cube are still just going to be better in the deck. So on to the enchantments, and these are some of my favorite cards in the whole deck. Now, I still can't figure out, if you have doubling season out, and you cast a huge X spell, and you get a giant Hydra, you get two giant Hydras with double the counters, or one with double the counters, and this is the second enter as a 0-0. Zero, zero. I don't know. But worst case scenario, you still get double counters on your Hydra, which is enough for me. And best case scenario, you end up with two with double. I don't know. I'm not a judge. I don't speak with any judges regularly, so I'm not quite sure. Couldn't find a definitive answer. But regardless, it's going to be great in the deck. And then Mana Reflection, speaking of doubling, Mana Reflection is silly. I kind of skipped over Nyx Bloom Ancient before, but I'm just grouping them together here. These two are just so important. I don't really run any other mana doublers just because these are the only ones that are going to double stuff from Cabal Coffers, double stuff from Doubling Cube, and really gets us to that next level. These and combinations are going to get us into the hundreds instead of the tens and really cause for some silly turns. But my two favorite enchantments in the entire deck are going to both care so much about X spells. And we have Unbound Flourishing and Shark Typhoon. We'll start with Unbound Flourishing before I get too excited. Phenomenal card. It's going to double up essentially the value of our Xs, double up some of our X spells. The card is just silly and it is so much fun. I play it in my Villainous Wealth deck currently, even though it's only got like two X spells. Having it in a deck dedicated to X spells is going to be even more silly. And then Shark Typhoon. Freaking Sharknado, what, what else do you need to know? You get literal flying sharks to throw at people. 
But this is for all your non-creature spells. It's not just the X spells. So you're going to get flying sharks everywhere, but it is a great backup effect for our commander. If our commander starts getting killed, this is a great way to still have massive creatures and instead of hydras, you get massive sharks. And I think that's a cool trade-off. I'm okay with it. Now, moving on to the lands. The lands are incredibly important in this deck. I, I know it's an expensive card, but Cabal Coffers is really the cog that gets this deck going. You need Urborg and Cabal Coffers because that kind of just starts so many of our engines. Whereas with that Nyx Bloom Tassiger deck, you could just go ahead and Birthing Pod or Eldritch Evolution straight into Nyx Bloom from Tassiger and have insane ramp to the point where Cabal Coffers didn't matter. In this deck, we just don't have that line of play. We need Cabal Coffers and Urborg to get us to these silly amounts of mana. We have plenty of other ways to ramp and it's still effective, but to really take it to that explosive level, Urborg and Cabal Coffers kind of have to be in there. And then speaking of Cabal Coffers, as with every rampish deck I, I make, I, I need to point out that someone forgot a key line of text on Cabal Coffers, and they forgot the word legendary, meaning we can make as many copies as we freaking want, and there's plenty of cards that are gonna copy this. I already mentioned Mirage Mirror, more Cabal Coffers. Vesuva, more Cabal Coffers. Thespian Stage, more Cabal Coffers. It is just, that's kind of the point of the deck with all our ramp, the tutors for lands, we get a bunch of copies of Cabal Coffers, use our doubling cube, use our mana reflections, and then get out a calculator and see how big our X's are going to be and see how massive our Hydras are going to be. But two other lands that are supremely important are Alchemist Refuge. I love this so much in the deck because having Flash on a land, one, it's hard to remove, but two, it does let us play stuff on that end step before our turn to give our Hydras virtual haste. Super important. And two is Boseju. Just like minutes before filming, I saw the counter spell that you don't have to pay mana for if you control your commander. Counter spells are doing too much, and that's why we need things like Boseju to tell those nope players nope. Make our stuff uncounterable and let us have these massive instants and sorceries without fear of it being countered. Now, that's going to do it for the categories. Let's move on to the game winning step. How are we killing people with this deck? How are we taking people out? Obviously, Hydras, but let's get into the specifics. Now, there's a number of ways that we can win in this deck. I already mentioned Villainous Wealth itself is a win con, but there's some different things I want to talk about more directly related to our commander. The first one I want to talk about, Zero Surprise. I love Phyrexia. I'm going Triumph for the Hordes. You get some of these Hydras on board with a Triumph for the Hordes, give it Trample. It, it's really not going to be that hard to go ahead and get two, three Hydras and have that be enough to take out multiple players. To, to be honest, other Overrun effects are probably more effective in the deck, but it's Triumph for the Hordes. I love Infect. It's going in. Another play pattern that I love in my Titania deck that I'm going to use in here as well is using Finale of Devastation. I teased it earlier, but what you're going to do is pump crazy mana into Finale of Devastation. Tutor for End Raise Forerunners, which I actually put in over Crater Hoof on purpose because we're not going to have a ton of creatures. We're just going to have a few massive creatures. Pump all the mana into there, get End Raise Forerunners. Then you're able to swing with haste, trampling creatures with vigilance, meaning you can swing take people out and keep blockers up. It is an awesome little combo between End Race Forerunners and Finale of Devastation. And it really only works when you have X of 10 or more. And in this deck, we're basically always gonna have that. And then last but not least, I haven't talked about this card in a while, but I don't love it any less. And it's Simic Ascendancy. Simic Ascendancy is gonna be a great way to win in this deck. Getting 20 counters on this thing is gonna be way too easy. That's gonna be essentially one, maybe two X spells. If you get this out, especially some with some of that flash effects with that Alchemist Refuge, you can really sneak a game and win out of nowhere. It is in a supremely powerful effect in this deck. And I think this is the deck that's probably, of all the ones I've thrown it in, that can use it to win the easiest. And that really does excite me because I love this card. And that's going to do it for this week's deck tech. I hope y'all really enjoyed it. There is so much exciting stuff coming in Aquaria, believe me. I have, I think I already have four decks in the process of brewing and this is still spoilers are still happening everything hasn't been spoiled yet so at, or at least at the time of filming so if i'm missing some cards don't worry i'll be updating the deck list let me know what y'all think but i think it was just such an awesome experience especially with all the scariness and all the craziness going on with the virus right now it was such a cool experience just to be able to be on twitter and just sit there waiting for spoilers all the positivity all the excitement there was amazing it was a really really fun few days and it was a little much having the set and the commander set at the same time being spoiled. I was a little overwhelmed. But either way, it was, it was really fun and it did really kind of take my mind off of everything. So let me know what y'all think. As always, a huge shout out to the patrons. We love and appreciate y'all so, so much. Tons of stuff coming in the next few weeks between all the deck techs. I actually kind of want to do some, some lists of some of my favorite cards. I have so many cards in this set have me excited that are going to go in so many decks. I, I want to find some way to show some appreciation to them, even if they're not in decks that I'm building. So lots of stuff coming. But until then, I will see y'all next time.